Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Beaky here back once again with another little car vlog. I want to talk about some video game news. I don't want to have to wait till I get home in front of the computer all nice and chill. I just feel like talking about the gaming industry because some interesting stuff has happened over recent hours and days. If you guys haven't heard the big news, Steam is going to be updating their system for trains cards and you're not going to be able to get them right away for some games. So some smaller games or maybe games that could be considered fake games are going to have to go through a period where they're going to have to be cleared as real games per se by Steam before they start giving out trading cards. Now, some of us out there who are mostly PlayStation 4 gamers, console gamers, or handheld gamers, or even mobile gamers may not really be using the Steam Marketplace very much. What's going on here? Hold on guys, I'm driving. You can beep all you want. There's a big semi trailer next to me with his freaking caution lights on. I'm gonna be paying attention let him go first. I don't know what the heck that was about. Anyways, let's continue. Let me change lanes at that. Um, yeah, so Steam is going to be making it so that games, when they put up on Steam, they are not going to automatically have trading cards if they don't pass an algorithm to show up that there actually are genuine games. Because the situation that was happening before was that Developers would make these stupid games that would go on green light that were basically bullshit games And once they get approved for green light and they go to the store even if nobody ever bought the games They would have free keys for those games give them out to their own Bots and those bots would play the games unlock the trading cards that the developers implemented Take those trading cards and put it on the Steam marketplace sell those trading cards and through that system They could generate revenue for a game that nobody even bought and with systems like that out there, of course, there's people abusing the system. So Valve is trying to crack down on these developers putting out these crappy games that are affecting the store marketplace and making it look like, oh, whoa, 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 police all over the place. What is that? Oh, big crash. My God. Whoa. Whoa, three car. Whoa, four car crash in a trailer. I, whoa. No, I'm not, no, not touching my, I'm driving. I'm not touching my phone. I'm not going to do it. Sorry guys, you guys can't see it. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna do it because I'm driving for attention. Anyways, back on point. Uh, so, uh, that was some crazy shit. It's a fucking four car crash out of nowhere. I think it's a good move from Valve to be implementing this right now because it's gonna clean up the marketplace of some of these crappier Steam games that we've been seeing pop up all over the place. And for me, as somebody who just recently, after hearing all this trading card stuff, started selling some of my Steam trading cards just to see what it's like, and I was able to make a few bucks. I mean, like, I had some rare ones that I didn't even know about. After years of being on Steam, I didn't know how many trading cards I've had just from all the different titles that I've owned. There wasn't no big money or anything like that, but it was enough to be like, hey, this could actually pay for something. And I was like, okay, I have sold enough trading cards on Steam to buy myself a game on Steam. Like, trading cards, digital pictures. I put up trading, like, there was this Batman trading card that, like, my friends played Batman Arkham VR, and there was, like, 37, like, even that went for 37 cents. Why did somebody pay 37 cents for a card of Robin from Batman VR? I'm like, I, I don't know. But apparently some trading cards could go all the way up to like a dollar and ninety cents or even higher than that depending on when the game comes out, how popular the game, or how close to release, how much money they are, how rare the game is and all that jazz. So it's another way that I, I think Steam wants people to interact with their marketplace and obviously Valve takes a cut. Every time when I was listing up these um, cards for sale, Valve was like, hey, we're going to take two cents. We're going to take a penny from depending on what it is. We're going to take... 10 cents depending on how much you sell it. So they're making a cut from everything that sells. So it's whether people are using um, credit from their wallet or paying with cash through PayPal or using their credit card, Valve is getting their money from the system somehow, some way. And I don't blame them for making their money. I don't blame them. But at the same time, I can understand how these fake games are actually hurting the platform. If these fake games keep our ones that keep showing up on Steam on the front page as the highlighted games on Greenlight, then nobody's going to care about Greenlight. Nobody's going to care about these indie titles. Like, I've literally... 90% of the times these days when the Steam front page comes up, I don't really care about any of the games that their algorithm is trying to show me because those games are not really things that interest me. 
It's just not the type of games that I'm really into. But part of the problem with the system Valve is saying is because there are so much fake games. Developers doing these indie bullshit and fake games on Greenlight, which they're trying to get rid of the Greenlight program and do the Steam Direct, that it's messing with their algorithm and trying to refer games that are bad when they're trying to, you're supposed to be referring games that are good. Because if Valve knew me that well as a gamer, they would know to refer me VR titles, new interest in VR titles, but they never, they hardly ever do that. Refer me Dark Souls type games, refer me racing games. Those are the type of things that they should be referring to me as a genre of games that I play on PC and I've owned a lot of. The Assassin's Creed, the, the Batman Arkham or VR, the Borderlands, the things that are in my library that I played a lot of, but it bases around what your friends plays as well. And unfortunately, as a YouTuber, I do have a lot of friends who are my Steam friend list who are YouTubers as well and do play a lot of indie games. And sometimes they play a lot of these more bullshit type of indie games where on the front page I'm getting, seeing stuff that I'm like, this is just pure trash. This is just pure trash. So hopefully their new changes are going to help out the Steam front page. So when I go to Steam and I see something, I'll be like, okay, I didn't know about this game and it actually looked interesting, or I didn't know about this game, and now it's on sale, and now I want to buy it. Now, obviously, Valve already has systems for the Steam wishlist, which is a feature of Steam that I use very heavily. I put games on my Steam wishlist, and when I get a notification whenever that game goes on sale. Now, I think Sony and uh, Microsoft need to be putting them games on the PSN and Xbox Live on sale a lot more, but even in a sense, Steam as a PC marketplace they do do sales, but it's not as how much it used to be. PC gaming prices used to drop really fast back in the day, but nowadays it's 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 not as easy to find as many great sales as it once was. I'm not saying that you can't, because don't get me wrong, guys. There's definitely places out there to find sales, but I can see why so many people these days are maybe turning into the G2A or the CD keys of the world, even though sometimes those sites can be shady depending on how they're set up, especially with G2A with the G2A Shield. And I'm like, ah, oh, like G2A just, man, I remember the time I was using GTA, the one G2A. I made a video about this a few years ago, I think. Maybe it's a year now. You guys can look it up on my channel, right, G2A. And I was asking what your guys' feelings about that system was. Because the whole thing with G2A, when I was I was doing it, I had the G2A shield. And I was just like, why am I going to pay you money to guarantee I get a key that I, I paid money for? I mean, like, it's, that sounds like a scam. If I have to pay you money to get a key that I'm paying you money for to guarantee that I get the key, then that must mean that there might be something wrong with said key. So I was like, ah, I'm a little hesitant on this. So I wasn't just, I really wasn't with it. And I was just like, nah, I ain't giving these guys the $2 or whatever they want for the G2A shield to guarantee that I get the game. I was not okay with that at all. But overall point though, with Green Man Gaming out there, GOG, um, even Origin and EA's thing, you know, and Ubisoft, you play. There are a lot of places to buy games on PC. A lot of places to get cheap games on PC. And Steam is not the only option. It's just that sometimes it seems nowadays that certain things on Steam that I think would have dropped in price, that the, the, everybody's kind of waiting for a big Steam sale. It doesn't seem like developers are just dropping prices on their own. Everybody's going for that big Steam sale to do it then. Eh. But maybe I just don't, I'm not, I'm not a power user for Steam anyways, as I clearly am saying, guys. This is just for somebody who's a casual Steam user. I, in the sense that I am a hardcore gamer, I buy games on PC, I got a game on a console and handheld, and I play those games. But I'm not looking for the new hotness every single week, and I'm not searching through all the Steam communities. I'm not posting on the Steam community pages. I'm not interacting with Green Light. That's not the type of, I'm not that in-depth with it. So of course the little tiny things I'll miss out on, but even with that being said, I still think I'm pretty much what you would consider an average PC Steam user. A guy who goes on Steam and expects to see something that might interest him because Steam says they use this algorithm that's supposed to take information from your friends who you play games with, the games you own, and what everybody else on Steam is playing right now and try to recommend you things that are quite interesting to you. But I guess the problem with being all these fake games that developers are putting out there to make money off the card systems and they're doing the giving away free keys to, um, like they'll go into a Steam community and say, hey everybody, here's some free keys for my game to like get, generate activity for the game and however way they want to make money. It's like the whole entire um, CSGO thing. Like they're, they're, they're trying to get rid of uh, ways that people could make money out like from selling stuff inside, no, outside of the Steam client. 
So basically, if you were able to um, manipulate the system and actually be able to sell stuff that you weren't able to sell, like sell a, a case, trading cards, they want to limit your options for doing that. And I'm like, it's not that much of a bad thing to me. I think it's not a bad idea to do that at all. Only thing else I will say, guys, is I do like the idea now that developers soon will have the ability to send people Steam keys directly on Steam. So, like, uh, um, there's a lot of developers that email me code for a lot of indie games. I don't play a lot of them. As you guys can clearly see, I get these codes. The developers know me. They even say, they know me. Like, yesterday I got um, Viking Rage, and I said, you know what? I'm into VR. I'll try that one out. But a lot of these games, I just never end up playing them. And I never use the keys. I probably should give them away. Uh, you know what? There will be a Steam key in the description, not in the comments of this video for two different games. Whoever wants these Steam keys, take them, play the games, enjoy it. Have fun with the games. It's just something I wasn't going to play, so I figured maybe you guys will like them. So give away randomly because I can. Now, with that, though, I think it's going to make it a lot more safer, though, for the developers and the streamers or the YouTubers or the reviewers because now you don't have to worry about somebody impersonating being like, I don't know, big time YouTuber, let me pick one that does reviews, Angry Joe. Let's say somebody tries to impersonate being Angry Joe, contacting a publisher to get a review code for a Steam game. And then the developer sends out the email with the code to Angry Joe. And now, then they take that code and go sell it back on G2A or something like that. That's kind of bullshit. Now Angry Joe officially contacts that developer and the developer is like, huh, we already sent you a code out, Angry Joe. And then Angry Joe's like, no, I never requested one. Then the developer realized, oh my God, somebody was impersonating him. This is just a scenario I'm saying that could possibly happen and had, not to Angry Joe specifically, but has happened um, in the past. I've heard stories of this in the news gaming industry where like people get impersonated, even like big sites like Gate IGN, GameSpot, Jeff Jurors, like I've heard about shit like that where people impersonate them trying to get game codes for Steam to sell them or just to use them for themselves. But if you're able, if the developers have the ability on Steam to just send somebody directly a code right to their Steam profile, well, that's gonna be a lot more easier. It's not like they couldn't really do it right now, I think, because there is a way to trade, like uh, buy, send gifts. But from what I understand, Steam is gonna make it a lot more easier. So I think that's a good move. I just really do think that's going to be a really cool and good move. And it's going to be a good thing for users, people who review games, all around the student community in general. So that's been my little chat right now, guys. Just talking about the video game industry. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like what I do, hit the like button. If you dislike what I do, hit the dislike button. Um, and I'll be back. I just wanted to talk about games while I drive right now because I can. Peace out. Let me go find somewhere to pull over so I can stop this damn video. Can I go?